Hello, my name is Scott Howard. I'm an application engineer with the Video Network Monitoring Group at Tektronix. This afternoon we're going to be addressing one of the questions that's come to the forefront in the video industry, and that is how do you know that you're delivering the same video quality from the head end and that same video quality is arriving at the customer location? We're going to be using two pieces of equipment this afternoon to do that, the Sentry Edge video monitoring system and the Tektronix WFM5250 with HDMI input, just introduced recently. So let's get started. Let's look at the video signal coming from the head end. In this case, we've got a local broadcaster coming from the head end, in, in this case NBC. We're looking at some of the video aspects of this signal. We're looking at the bit rate details. We're also looking at two things uh, that help us identify the video quality, and that is quality of experience. We're looking at the, the transport stream structure, looking for impairments that would cause video blocking, uh, macro blocking slice errors. We're also looking at something called uh, perceptual video quality, which is more of a, a look at compression errors, which will cause fuzziness, uh, DC macro blocking again, but typically fuzziness and, and blurring around the image. Things that'll make the customer upset and want, make him want to call the uh, provider and, and complain. Finally, we're looking at, uh, at uh, video, uh, loud, excuse me, audio loudness and our uh, reason codes for why the uh, video quality might be less than we hoped it would be. In this case, uh, audio loudness down here as well. So let's start at the top again and we'll look at what's being delivered from the customer. In this case, it's MPEG-2 video, 1920 by 1080i, 420, 2997 frame rate. Do we believe that's what's actually arriving at the customer location? In this case, it's not. This might be a little difficult to see, but we've got the WFM5250 attached to the set-top box where the same RF qualm signal is coming to the set-top box. In this case, it's identified the signal as 1080i 5994, not 2997, 444 YCBCR. So we can see that the set-top box has reformatted the video. In this case, uh, quite a bit because it's doubled the frame rate and uh, no head-end providers sending out 4 two, or 444 video. It's typically sent out 420 for distribution. This is part of the set-top box mystery. The set-top boxes will always rescale the video signal and customers may or may not realize this. So we'll go through a couple more instances of what's happening to the video in the set-top box. In this case, let's take a look at audio loudness. We're looking at a, at a uh, excuse me, a 30 minute slice of time in this window here. Let me narrow that down so we're more closely matched to what's going on with the audio here in the waveform monitor. So we'll look at, at five minutes instead. We'll click refresh re so we get a new graph. And there's our audio loudness in a five minute window. We're looking at the same audio loudness on the WFM 5250 in a seven and a half minute window. And you can see here that our average uh, audio level for this period is minus 22 dB. We're looking at something around minus 18 dB here. We've noticed that the set-top boxes will re rescale the audio somewhat as well, and we've seen differences by as much as two or three dB in what the audio loudness level is at the head end versus what's actually coming out of the set-top box. This may cause customers to call and complain uh, needlessly in some cases. Now, we are also be, have the ability to look at audio bars. We've got 5.1 Dolby coming out of the head end into the set-top box. Uh, we do not have Dolby in the 5250, so we're converting that to PCM. And we're still able to make the same uh, type loudness measurement on the two-channel PCM as we did on the five-channel Dolby. Since this is Dol uh, not, uh, not uh, full Dolby and PCM, we're not getting a full surround field here in this display. It doesn't matter, we're making the same type of loudness measurement on the two channels. We're also able to look at the picture. We're also able to identify that we have closed captioning in the picture as well, so we know the CC is present. We can also test on the Sentry to make sure that we have closed captioning present by setting an alert I set up a report to look at some of the things that the FCC might find a local deliverer of video on, and we named that FCC violations. So they're looking at, one, distance from dial norm, 
And we're also looking at closed caption occupancy. These are new features for the uh, Century Edge 2 product. Uh, for closed captioning, we figure that 85% uh, occupancy should be a good starting point, although typically to, to set it more accurately, we might want to set that at 40% or 50%. Since we know captions are not always present in the stream, that's why you knock the percentage of occupancy down. This test is helpful because other tests that measure closed captioning would send a flood of alerts continuously, and that's not helpful for, for us or for the, uh, the provider of the video and the audio. Also, distance from dial norm, anything over 2 dB de uh, deviation from the dial norm level is something for concern and needs to be measured by the, uh, by the video provider. What we're trying to avoid here is calls by the FCC, and it also helps the provider proactively analyze what his signal is doing, what content is being delivered to the end user, and keep control of that. These types of errors can also be logged and alerted on, and the Century Edge 2 will keep this data in database for up to 60 days so that the user can go back and take a look and see what was delivered at a particular time if an issue or a discrepancy or, or a, an argument comes up between the provider and the, the uh, final deliverer of the video and the audio. And we're back to the status page. Now, if I want to look at all the panels simultaneously, I just hold the button down, and I can look at all the panels that we just talked about on the WFM 5250 directly. One other uh, note of interest is that not only does the set-top box rescale the audio and the video, it also re may rescale the color space. We've seen instances where, depending on the, the, uh, the device in question, the color space may shrink a little bit, Worst case says the, the uh, customer will notice a softening in the colors. This may be a set-top box issue as well. In some instances, we've seen 709 color space being delivered uh, from the head end, and the set-top box is delivering 601 color space to the customer. That's obviously a, a set-top box misadjustment. So again, it's very important to measure what's going on, what the quality of the audio and the video is at the head end, and what's being actually received at the customer space or at least be able for a, a head-end provider in their lab to be able to verify what all their different types of set-top boxes are delivering to their customers. Hopefully this is helpful. Thank you for uh, being here this afternoon. If you have any questions, you can always go to www.tech.com and gather some more educational information on, at that website. Thank you.